Welcome back to the Online Sale Coach YouTube channel. So, a few weeks ago, I made a video about the rumours of a Deed of Gift America's Cup match and maybe the Cup itself being hosted in the UK. It's fair to say the vast majority of viewers weren't too happy at the idea. In this video, we'll be looking at why many sailing fans oppose such an event being hosted in the UK. But first, I need your advice. This YouTube channel has been growing so fast recently. Now that's great and all, but it makes it even more urgent to have the right brand name going into the future. I've come up with several ideas that you can see on the screen. If you could let me know which you like and which you don't, that would be awesome. And maybe you like or dislike the current channel name, Online Sale Coach. All that would be useful to know. So if you wouldn't mind leaving a quick comment, that would be really appreciated. Right, to the news. News keeps trickling in about a cup event being held in a venue outside of New Zealand. So it's certainly a rumour we should be taking seriously. Just quickly for those who don't know, the America's Cup is usually hosted in the country of the previous winner. But that's not always the case. The most recent example of which was in 2007 when Valencia was the venue after the Swiss team had won the cup. So let's go into the first article. This reads that Team New Zealand ace predicts bright future as hosting intrigue builds. Team New Zealand veteran Ray Davies is adamant that America's Cup is well placed to push on from its success at Auckland 2021. Ray Davies has said that no hosting decision process would be made until Auckland and the New Zealand government have presented their vision for the event, having been given 90 days from Team New Zealand's success against Luna Rossa on March 17. And that would be weighed up against international alternatives. So all these rumours about a potential deed of gift match in Cowles or an America's Cup hosted uh, in another country, maybe they are just tactical rumours leaked by Team New Zealand or anyone else with an interest to firstly see what the reaction to something like that would be, or how the fans would react, and secondly maybe to incentivise Auckland and the New Zealand government to produce a good bid for the event. But there's also the possibility that Team New Zealand genuinely think that there are better options out there and ones worth looking at. Ray Davis goes on saying it's wide open, there are all sorts of options out there, but we have to try and figure out which is the best one and what is actually doable in this climate as well. It's all a bit tricky, but the intent is there from a lot of people to keep it all rolling as a remarkable event. And you really get the sense from what New Zealand are putting out that they do seem to genuinely care about the future of the event and not just winning it again for themselves. But there's been a huge backlash to the rumour of the America's Cup being hosted in a venue outside of New Zealand. This article reads, Why it is a no-brainer to keep the America's Cup in New Zealand? The author says they're tired of hearing speculatory comments and articles on where the next America's Cup might be held. The self-described nutty crazy fan says it is a no-brainer that the event remains in New Zealand. The America's Cup must stay in New Zealand because every man, woman and their dog, sailor or not, is behind it. And the YouTube comments I got on that last video really impressed on me this view that there's a really strong fan following in New Zealand, potentially more so than anywhere else in the world, and you really don't want to risk making an unpopular decision in their eyes. However, you have to balance that against what's best for the Cup, and you have to be open to the possibility that what's best for the Cup might not be best in the eyes of New Zealanders. So my question to you guys is, do you think that the America's Cup staying in New Zealand is the best thing for the America's Cup? Personally, I think it probably is, but we really need to look at ways to ramp up the World Series and ways to increase the international audience of the Cup. Going back to the article, the author admits that yes, there would probably be a great deal of media interest if the Cup went back to Cowes, the venue where it was first held in 1851. But you will never have the whole nation uniting behind it, in a way only the All Blacks of a World Cup or other similar fan manias can rival. And I agree with her on this point, I don't see the majority of the country getting behind this or even hearing about the America's Cup. Sailing is a fairly niche sport and like all sports it's been on a gradual decline. I'd expect it would get a decent amount of interest, but I'd be surprised if more than 20% of the country paid much attention to it. The article goes on saying that when Pete Burling lifted the trophy at around 7pm, the presenters were talking about how far the crowds were stretching. And I think this would happen in the UK, because you have to remember the UK population is much bigger than New Zealand's population, and the America's Cup would be held in cows, and there's a very high concentration of sailing fans in the south of England. 
This rumoured dealer gift match between Emirates Team New Zealand and Ineos in Cowes is also not necessarily popular with all the British yachting faithful. I have not heard any of my fellow Brits speak very positively of the rumour. The article reads, it's one of the options on the table for Team New Zealand as they look to move the cup forward following their successful defence. British pundit Mangus Wheatley had this to say about Britain being handed a gift-edged opportunity to finally win the America's Cup. If Ratcliffe and co can pull off the impossible and get the America's Cup racing in the Solent, it would be icing on the cake in 2022. But doubt hangs in the air like an acrid, toxic mist. Interestingly, there's almost a reticence amongst some to the very notion of a cup arriving on UK shores, and that's a new mood in the UK. The sense that somewhat buying the cup is a somewhat vulgar expression of opportunism is prevalent in many that I spoke to in Cowes over the weekend. It would be far more welcomed after a hard-won, deserved British victory, and that's fair enough. And I totally agree with that. Van Ainsley's whole narrative has been to bring the cup home, and while having this event in Cowes somewhat does that, he won't have done it by winning it. And that was somewhat cheap in the message he's been putting out the last 10 years. Personally, I think the Brits should just keep on fighting. They have the potential to win the cup in the next few years, and wouldn't it be a much bigger news story to have brought the cup home by winning it? Mangus goes on to say English sensibilities don't stretch easily to the thought of winning by default. It would perhaps, and I say this through gritted teeth, be a hollow cup event. Although the increased revenues and prestige of seeing those magnificent AC-75s blasting around the Solent would be a sight to behold and have the town rocking once again. Magnus says that cows would be a terrific host. Will it happen? I doubt it, but in the America's Cup anything is possible. Stranger things have happened. I agree with pretty much all of that. I think cows would make a great venue, but the fairy tale news story would only make sense if the Brits had won the America's Cup and brought it back. Interestingly, the article goes on to say that apart from confirming they have plenty of options, New Zealand have been tight-lipped about the rumours. Though speculation has listed China and Dubai as potential destinations for a cup offshore. Now I have to say I think there is a strong argument to host the cup somewhere out of Australasia and the US. Hosting in a neutral venue would certainly reduce the animosity involved as however hard they try it looks like the Brits are buying the cup to the UK. I'd be interested in hearing your thoughts on whether you think that a neutral venue may be a good thing for the America's Cup. If you did host it in a neutral venue such as China or Dubai that increases the chances of getting a further challenger as the host may well be encouraged to produce their own syndicate. Arguably the New Zealanders, Brits and Americans are going to watch the cup wherever it is. But bringing it to a neutral event such as China or Dubai has the potential to open the cup up to a brand new audience. Which could be a real step forward for the cup. You only have to look back to 2007 when the cup was held in Valencia to what was widely considered a success. On to another article. Here we have an interview with the New York Yacht Club Commodore who are behind the American Magic Challenge. He says that the New York Yacht Club will not support a deal of gift match or an America's Cup competition that is effectively open to only the defender and the challenger of record, in this case Ineos. Regattas in Perth in 1987, Auckland in 2003 and Valencia in 2007 helped increase the interest in the America's Cup and Culver said a two-team race would undo the progress made. He says that each of those, referring to Perth, Auckland and Valencia, drew 10 or more teams and the significant commercial interest necessary to support such a grand event. To waste the opportunity on a two-team event is not in the best interests of the cup or the sport. Luna Rossa helmsman Jimmy Spittle is certainly a fan of keeping the cup in New Zealand, which is perhaps not a surprise considering he lives next door in Australia. Spittle said he would be surprised if the old mug wasn't defended in New Zealand again. Look at the amount of time and money put into this team. I would have thought it would be an absolute no-brainer to hold it here. Certainly the big advantage of keeping it in New Zealand is that all the infrastructure is there. It would help with the continuity because all the teams will want to carry on and they all have bases set up there. It would actually be a cheaper event for the New Zealand government to run because a lot of this is already set up. Now I thought it would be interesting to have a quick look at some comments on my last video, Next America's Cup in the UK. A lot of the comments share this tone, win the cup first, then you have the right to sell it in the UK. That is Team Ineos' answer to not being able to win against the other defenders. The Poms trying to jump the queue, I don't think so bro. The Poms simply haven't earned the right for that. Now I've never heard the word Poms before so I had to look that up. 
Apparently it's a slightly derogatory term used to describe us Brits. You learn something new every day. Anyway, back to the point. There's no way that Ben Ainsley, Sir Jim Ratcliffe and Ineos haven't seen this backlash in some form or another. And I think just reading similar comments to this would make the Brits not want to host the cup. I think the vast majority of people, including us Brits, are particularly against the possibility of a match only involving Ineos and Team New Zealand. Chris Britt says he would love to see an America's Cup in my local pond. That said, I feel that any competition that doesn't include a proper field of competitors is of dubious value. And he brings up the interesting point that Ineos still need to find out if their boat is actually any good. I think if the regatta was raced in Cowles next year, the odds of a Brit's winning would be very low. Here's another comment from Tom, a fellow Brit. Ineos have complained about how Luna Rossa acted as challenger of record. Now they're in the same position, they're excluding the others. Bad form. I agree with the sentiment of this, but I would be very surprised if this event happens and the Brits are behind it. Tom makes a good point that a one-on-one -on -one regatta would be dead boring, and we sort of saw that in the last America's Cup. Inviting the other teams plus newcomers would make for an extended and interesting event, even if the final result might end up being the same. Why couldn't we have some fleet racing between these AC-75s in other venues apart from New Zealand in the lead up to the full America's Cup in 2024. Personally I think we should be keeping the Cup in New Zealand next time round, but we seriously need to ramp up the World Series. I know it was hampered last year but I still don't think we were doing enough. As we're keeping the AC75 class this time round, we now have 8 boats available and this is a great opportunity to allow other countries to join in the racing and to run some World Series fleet racing events in them. Now I'm not an expert on the safety implications of running such an event, so it would be interesting to hear from you if you think such an event could happen. Having at least two of these fleet racing events every year in the lead up to 2024 would really keep the interest there and build the interest worldwide for the Cup. So that's everything for today. If you like the video please leave it a thumbs up, it really helps the channel and it's quick and easy to do. As always, I'd love to hear your thoughts and if you have any name ideas for the channel, you can find them in the text below this video and it'd be great to hear which ones you like and which ones you don't and feel free to come up with suggestions of your own. See you next time.